of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16. Praise God. It's just an introduction. Praise God to the message that I'm going to be preaching on tonight. Amen. Amen. Praise God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 16, the Apostle Paul, amen, speaking to the believers in the church of Corinth, and this is what he said, for which cause we faint not. Now, the word faint in context does not mean loss of consciousness. Amen? Because we all know when you are unconscious, amen, you are no longer, amen, aware of your thoughts and uh, your actions. Amen? However, the word faint in context means that we are not to lose courage Amen. in our relationship with God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We must keep studying the word of God, uh, being constantly in fellowship and being prayerful. And that's why Jesus said in Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, he said men ought always to prayer and not to faint. Amen? Amen. Pray that I think I'm going to clarify that. For example, if you have a need this morning, amen, pray about it. And if that need is not manifested by this evening, amen, and you have another need, amen, continue to pray. But don't say if God didn't answer my first prayer this morning, he's not going to answer, amen, my second prayer this evening. No, you have to continue to pray until you get results. Amen? amen. Don't give up. Now Paul continue, amen, he said, but though the outward man perish, the outward man perish, the outward man is the physical body, amen, that is facing the material world through its five senses, amen. Now, this outward mortal man is subject to affliction, death, and decay. This physical body, amen, is subject to affliction, death, and decay. Remember also, this physical body is not getting younger, amen. Instead of it is getting older every day. Yes. And one day, amen, it will come to nothing. Mm -hmm. Amen? It will pass from existence. Mm -hmm. Amen? For example, the house that uh, we live in is decaying every day. Yeah. And that's why we have to maintain it. Amen? Likewise, we are responsible to keep our physical body in good condition. Amen? and healthy. Amen? Amen? Pray not only by exercising regularly, amen, and eating a healthy diet, but there is a spiritual application also, and that is to study the Word of God. Amen? amen. That's why Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. Amen? We all know that bread is natural food that satisfies, amen, physical hunger. But the word of God, amen, is spiritual food, amen, that satisfies, amen, praise God, our spirit. Amen? So, um, praise God, we must study God's word daily and being prayerful and being in constant fellowship. Now, I was told, praise God, that the... For my studies, as a matter of fact, that the human body, amen, was created to perpetuate itself. Amen. In other words, every 7 to 11 years, amen, each cells, amen, in our bodies, amen, praise God, praise God, changes. Not one cell in our body today that was there 11 years ago, amen, praise God, is there today, Amen. And medical science cannot understand why the human body ages and die. Amen? Praise God, they can't understand. But I do have the answer for that. 
Amen? Amen. I said, I do have the answer for that. Amen. Romans chapter 6 and verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death. Amen. Amen. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So sin is the culprit here. Sin is responsible for the human body. Amen. Praise God. Ages. Amen. And eventually it is going to die. Amen. Verse 17 says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. You see, our light affliction is um, what we endure in this life. For example, the pain, the distress, the hardship, the difficulties, and the trouble are light only when we remain faithful to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They're not heavy. Amen? By comparison, the eternal glory outweighed them all. Amen. The eternal glory is greater than our light affliction in this life. Therefore, we must not let or allow our faith to be diminishes. Amen? Praise. That's why the Bible says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen? The mere fact, the term walk is mentioned there, it indicates that faith is a progressive development. Amen? The faith that work, amen, yesterday is not sufficient for today, and the faith that works today is not sufficient for tomorrow. Amen? So we have to continue walking by faith and not by sight. Amen? Sight refers to the sense realm. Praise God. Amen? Verse 18 says, Amen? While we look not at the things which are seen. Now the things, amen, we see is visible. What we see is the natural man with his symptoms, his situation. His circumstances, his problems, amen? But these are merely, amen, temporal, amen? And uh, when we fix our, uh, uh, when we fix our eyes on these things, amen, we become discouraged, amen? But when we see the symptoms, we should not worry. Why? Amen. Why we should not worry? It is there, we see it, but why we should not worry? Here is where God, precious word, tied in. Amen. In First Peter 5 7 says, Casting all of our cares upon him, for he careth for us. In the midst of the trials, in the midst of the symptoms, God still cares. And that's why we have to cast it upon him. Amen? Somebody say, Amen. We cast all of our garbage upon him. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Only God, Amen, can carry, praise God, these heavy loads. Amen. For us. So it said, casting all of our cares upon the Lord. Amen. Now, when we cast all of our cares upon the Lord, all, that's a key word. When we cast all of our cares upon the Lord, amen, we don't have them anymore. Amen. Amen. We don't have them anymore. Amen. You are now living above your problem. Doesn't mean that you're not going to have any more problem. Because problems, they are reality. Amen. And it's when one is solved, I guarantee you another will present itself. Amen. Praise God. Because we live in this world, amen, praise God, and we will have to encounter, Perfect. praise God, people with their emotions, with their moods, amen, ups and downs, praise God, they're going to say, you know, hurtful things to you, and uh, sometimes you just have to, praise God, be quiet, amen. But many people, they pray, and uh, they ask God to take away their burdens, mm -hmm. and when they finish praying, they take it back from God and continue to carry their burden with long faces. Amen. Praise God. They even blame God. Amen. 
But notice, amen, the things which are seen is eternal. The things which are seen, praise God, that's what it says, is the things that are not seen is eternal. Amen. But some people only see the physical, which is temporal. Right. But they don't see the spiritual, which is eternal. And that's why we're told in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, For we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Now cross over with me, praise God, to uh, Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. And from verse 24, Jesus, uh, another parable, put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto man which sow good seed in his field. Amen. Now, in this parable, Jesus will use a natural seed to bring out a spiritual truth. Now, the good man that sow his seed in his field represent Jesus Christ himself. And the good seed he sow into his field represent his faithful believers of the kingdom. And the faithful believers are the children of light. Amen. That's why we are told in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13 says, Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So when you become a born again Christian, this is what God does. Amen. He takes you out of Satan's kingdom, which of course is darkness. And then he put you into his kingdom, amen, of light, which represents his dear son, amen? Now, Jesus said, in verse 25, he said, While men slept, he said, while men slept, amen, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way, amen? Now, by the word slept, amen, Jesus is not talking about physical sleep here. But Jesus was referring to the church not being on the alert. The church was, were not spiritually awakened. Amen. The church were not watching and prayer. That's how the enemy creeps into the church. Amen. And we're told in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. Amen. says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is like a roaring lion seeking he who may devour. Amen? Now, notice, Satan's image here is portrayed, amen, more like a lion. Amen? Now, you will never see the king of the jungle. Amen. Goes after the strong and the swift animals. No, the lion goes after the weak and the most vulnerable. Amen. Now, just like the lion, Satan's main objective is to attack the weak and the slow believers. That's why the believers, amen, that's why you as a believer, you have to grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Because you can only defeat the devil. Amen. Praise God. By the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I said you can only defeat Satan. Amen. Through the word of God. Amen. Listen. Amen. Take Satan seriously. But don't fear him. Amen. Amen. Don't fear it because the Bible says for God has not given us the spirit of fear, amen, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. Amen. He said, fear thou not for I am with you. Don't be dismayed for I am your God. Amen. 
I will strengthen you, I will uphold you, and I will keep you with my right hand of righteousness. Amen. Fear, it paralyzes, amen, your faith. Amen. And that's why the Bible says without uh, faith, amen, it is impossible to please God. Amen. That word impossible, it carries with it a divine connotation. Amen. Praise God. Without faith, amen, you cannot accomplish anything for God. Amen. Nothing whatsoever. Amen. So that's why we have to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Listen, take Satan seriously, but don't fear him. Amen. Now, this will be the results when the church were not spiritually awakened. Amen. Or when they were not watching and praying as believers. Amen. Praise God. Let God's word be in your heart, which of course is your spirit. Be sober and be vigilant. Amen. At all times. Because your adversary, your adversary means your opponent, your enemy, one who is against you. Amen. Praise God. He's like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. Amen. Jesus said, Amen. One man slept, what this? His enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. Amen. Now, the good man enemy here is Satan. Amen. Now, after Satan observed the good man sowing his seed in his field, amen, Satan decided to sow his evil tears in the same field. Amen. Now, church, the tears, amen, in the natural, the tears is a poisonous seed, amen. But spiritually, the tears, amen, represent the children of the devil. Amen. Verse 26, Jesus said, but when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, amen, then appear the tears also. Now remember, church, the seed the good man sow in his field produced fruitful believers of the kingdom. And the fruitful believers, amen, praise God, hallelujah, uh, could refer to what Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22 says, but the fruit of the spirit, amen, is love, peace, joy, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Now note carefully, Jesus said, amen, then appear the tears also. Now the tears growing among the wheat is a symbol of professing Christians and false teachers within the church. Now no doubt, Satan will use them to counterattack the truth of God's word. Amen. To undermine sound doctrine or to undermine the authoritative word of God. Amen. That's why Jesus said the words that I have spoken unto you. Amen. They are spirit and they are life. When God speaks to you, he's speaking life. Not death. And that's why if the word of God is on the inside of you, you will speak, amen, that word which of course is light. Amen? Hallelujah. So speak the authoritative word. Now Satan will use the tears, amen, to promote unrighteousness, amen, and the false doctrine within the church. Amen? Now in 2 John chapter 1 and verse 9 says, amen, Whosoever transgress and abided not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. Amen? He that abided in the doctrine of Christ, him both the Father 
amen, has both the Father and the Son. Amen. Now, the wheat and the tears, what is growing together, is a satanic strategy, church. Amen. And deception. Amen. That is to say, amen, the tears, amen, which represent the children of the devil, disguise, amen, their true identity. Amen. Praise God. Their true identity. Amen. So, the wheat, amen, which represent the children of the kingdom could not detect the cunning craftiness and the deception of Satan. Amen. amen. Mm. Now, what is church? Satan knows, amen, that the tears which represent the children of the devil will masquerade as the true wheat. <laughs> amen. Praise God. Amen. Now, the tears, amen, is um, what is the tears, amen, the poisonous seed, amen, is a superficial identity with the faithful believers, amen. So that's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 15 and verse 13, amen, every plant which my heavenly father has not planted shall be uprooted. Amen. Now, this pertain, amen, to the tears, amen, the fruitless professing Christians that masquerade, amen, as the true wheat. My God, hallelujah. Verse 27 says, So the servant of the household came and said unto him, Sir, did not, did not thou sow good seed in thy soil? Now, this is a very good question. Then he asks another good question. In the same verse, he said, From whence then has it tears? Amen. That is to say, amen. Praise God. When these professing Christians praise God, where these professing Christians come from? Where these false prophets and false apostles come from? Now, Jesus warn us in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 15 he said beware of false prophets which comes to you in sheep clothing amen but inwardly they are raven in wolves hmm. note carefully Jesus used the term beware amen now, this means we are to look out for them. We are to be on our guard because false prophets, amen, and false teachers come looking just like the sheep. Like God, hallelujah, amen. And they even appear righteous. But like the wolves, they are predators that comes to devour the sheep. That's why the Bible says, Amen, for the thief cometh not, but for to kill, steal, and to destroy. That is the job. That is Satan's number one, Amen, profession. is to kill, steal, and to destroy. He doesn't know anything else. Our enemies doesn't know anything else. That which kills, that which steal, that which destroy all such is the works of the enemy. Amen? But then Jesus contrasts his works, amen, to the works of the devil. Jesus said, but I come that you might have life and have it more, oh my God, abundantly. Amen? Praise God. Jesus said, by their fruits you shall know them. Now, the only way that you can identify false prophets is by their fruits. Jesus said, by their fruits, you shall know them. And you know what is their fruits? Amen. Their fruits is their doctrine or their teachings that is not in conformity, amen, with the purity of God's holy word. Amen. You see, 
In the beginning, when the wheat and the tears, amen, praise God, appears similar, <laughs> the servant of the household could not detect or distinguish between the two. Amen. Why? Because the wheat and the tares look alike. Amen. In other words, it was a mixed condition of believers and unbelievers. God, hallelujah. Amen. So finally, in verse 29, he said, an enemy has done this. This means when the fruitful believers were sleeping spiritually, amen, the mischief was done. Amen. The discovery was made. It was a disaster. But it was too late. Amen. But watch this. The servant of the household, they were troubled over what had happened. They were concerned. Amen. How to get rid of these wolves in sheep clothing. <laughs> Notice the servant said, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? But the good man said in verse 29, and I love this. He said, While we gather up the tears, we root up also the wheat. This means if you uproot the tears, which represent the children of the devil, amen, you can also offend, amen, the wheat, which represent the true believers, amen, because the wheat is the active crop, amen, which is the faithful believers. Therefore, this is not the time for separation. It is not God didn't give us that authority, amen, to run people out of the church because their conduct is annoying, amen. Praise God. We have to work with them. Amen. Praise God. Only God will separate them, amen. But that is not the pastor's responsibility to separate them. Amen. Praise God. Notice, amen, verse 30 says, Jesus said, let them grow together. The wheat, but imagine, praise God, the children of the devil and the children of God, they grow together. Amen. There's a reason for that also because there is hope. Amen. Praise God. With God, that's right. Sir. All things are possible with God. Amen. But if they decide not to change, amen, praise God, amen, notice what, um, praise God, verse 36 to 40 says, and I'm going to close here, praise God, 36 to uh, 40 says, that uh, hmm. both grow together until the harvest, amen, and in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather you together, even force the tears, and bind them, okay, in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barns. Amen? So this judgment, amen, only God is going to judge the tears, amen? Not us. That's why when people come into the church, amen, it is the pastor, amen, responsibility to make sure, amen, that um, they are properly fed, amen, with the purity of God's word, amen? Praise God. So, this, amen, I'm going to close, amen, and I thank God, praise God for your undivided attention, amen.